Going further back, you can appreciate the stomach and the omentum, which is draping all of the intestine. This is a female dog. It's also designed as a spay trainer. We do have the reproductive tra tract represented. It also has the suspensory ligaments, the broad ligament. It has the horns ovary. You would have to approach the abdomen, go in and break down that, that uh, suspensory ligament, ligate the ovarian um, vasculature, and then come down, break it down, and remove this as you would a common spay. One of the concerns we have as surgeons who might do an ovary hysterectomy is a condition called a dropped pedicle. So in the process of doing this procedure, if you did not ligate properly or were distracted or you sneezed or some problem arose, you might happen to not close the vessels that feed the ovary properly. Upon losing that or dropping it into the abdomen, it'll bleed freely, and that is considered an emergency. Uh, we're gonna set up a clinical scenario where one of their pedicles secondary to a spay that they've been doing um, is now bleeding. The patient is starting to decompensate. Their anesthesiologist is panicking in a certain way and kind of set up a high pressure situation for them to try and figure out where the bleeding is and to then stop that bleeding. And so we can set the heart rate or the strength of the beat as well. Um, and this should turn it on, which will then pump water throughout, which is our blood. Because your blood or your heart rate has now come up to a hundred and sixty beats oh, no. per minute. There and must so... be something bleeding. Okay, I'm gonna check your oh there it is. And your patient's heart rate is 180 beats per minute. And this stupid hemostat is not working. We're up to 200 beats per minute. Suction. Oh yeah, suction please. Okay. Alright, I found it. I'm gonna worry she's gonna go into cardiopulmonary arrest. I got it. Okay, bleeding is under control. Okay. And our heart rate is coming back down slowly here. And once you're done, cut that and release the hemostat and see if it's bleeding. Not bleeding. We saved this. We saved him. And so I would say that was really good. You guys identified the major bleeding pedicle. The only thing that I would say, instead of going directly in with a hemostat, mm. right, start with the Balfours, right? Oh, okay. Get in, improve your visualization, right? Okay. So you can truly see what's going on. We were looking for the source of bleeding um, and we found it. It was our dropped pedicle on the left side. Um, and we isolated the bleeding and got a chance to tie it off and check everything else as well once over. And yeah, dog is alive, or never was alive, but is fine. <laughs> How did you feel as the, uh, the crisis developed? I mean, yeah, I do feel like the machine really hyped it up. <laughs> Made me think something was really dying. Um, but yeah, it was well controlled really quickly and we were able to visualize everything really quickly, so that was good.